So a couple months ago, I saw a forum post. Uh, I cannot remember what it was called or where it was, but it was, um, you know, a flight rising forum post talking about flight rising on YouTube. When you try and uh, find flight rising themed YouTube videos, they tend to be guide based videos or informative videos, and you don't really see a lot of just flight rising themed videos. You don't see gameplay, uh, let's plays, you don't see discussion about the game itself. And the post, uh, you know, the post talked about that and talked about trying to get a group of people to make some Flight Rising YouTube. Now, looking at the state of YouTube, when I search up Flight Rising, I do not see um, that many videos uh, that are recent that aren't guide based. So I figured I would give it a try myself. Uh, since I'm doing some other stuff on YouTube now. Um, so, yeah. Uh, my first idea was, of course, to do uh, go through uh, processes for designing dragons and stuff, um, which I probably will do. But I think uh, a more interesting uh, topic to start with is um, the front page. Um, I'm not just going to talk about the front page, but rather I want to, what I want to do is go to this forum post, the site status slash news alerts uh, forum post, which if you're unfamiliar with it, it is almost always on the front page of the guides um, uh, forum. You go and find the site status news alert. When you subscribe to it, uh, anything that comes up in this site status or latest news will be posted to it by another player. Um, uh, now, site status and latest news, obviously, they're just little news posts. But I just wanted to sit down and discuss uh, all of the uh, little updates from the past week. It is currently September 3rd, so I will go back to August 27th which was the Flame Forgers Festival thing, uh, event. If you are interested in going back further, you can find this yourself. Uh, personally, I really like subscribing to it because sometimes they make so many site status posts that stuff gets pushed uh, out of the way. Um, so uh, I am just going to sit here and talk about uh, all of the most recent uh, posts from the past week uh, made to this I just want to talk about them and give uh, some background as to why those decisions, why these updates might have been made, what they mean, and all that sorts of things. Um, this is not uh, really a discussion for a really new player. I'm not going to dive into what is Flame Forgers Festival, why do we care about it, da 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 da. It's been a week, all of this stuff, uh, the, the event's over now, so I'm not really going to discuss it. Um, but maybe, maybe I will eventually talk about the individual event, but for right now, I don't think that it's important. However, this one, this little update here, um, is a visual guide to all aberration genes. If you don't know what the visual guides are, you can view them from the encyclopedia, and they are self-explanatory, just a visual guide for what the genes look like. Um, if you don't know what crystal looks like, here's a reference point. Uh, I don't tend to use this. I tend to just go to the scrying workshop and mess around with it a bit myself because I don't think one color is good enough to see what you're actually looking for, especially only on the one on the baby stage. For example, this blue is the accent color for skink, but you don't really necessarily know what other accent colors can appear there. Slime's accent color is purple on this specific red, but Again, it varies based on what color you're looking at. And it varies based off of the pose, so both the adult poses will look different than it looks on the baby pose. But if you are interested in just looking at all of the gene options, um, then this is a valid option to look for. And yeah. Um, so on August 30th, the there was an update to the Colosseum, uh, lowering all of the Sansep Delta enemies to level 9. Now, if you're not familiar with um, the Colosseum, which even experienced players aren't necessarily super familiar with it, um, 
you can see that these, the, like the training fields, has enemies level one to three. Woodland Path is four to six, and Scorch Forest is seven to eight. Sandstone Delta used to be nine to ten. Now it's all just nine. Now, if you're at all familiar with the state of the Colosseum, it is not a great mechanic. It does not play well. It's very repetitive and grindy and heavily RNG based. There are um, efforts being made to correct, uh, to make, to change the Colosseum uh, mechanic um, and have been for many, many years. However, with the site refactoring, which should actually be done around now, uh, that got in the way and so they haven't really had the time to put into it. And now that everyone has made stuff in, for the Colosseum, invested uh, into the dragons that they use in the Colosseum and the strategies, it, making any major changes to it would um, really upset the balance um, in that way and upset a lot of people. So what's going to happen with the Colosseum? Who knows for now, but they are trying to make it easier to use and less frustrating because it does have some bad mechanics to it. For example, a couple months ago, they lowered the um, uh, the dodge chance of a bunch of enemies in the lower level Colosseum. So they're less likely to dodge and so they are less frustrating. Um, and now they have made this uh, uh, the sense of Delta easier to get through. Because if you had a bunch of level 9 dragons and you had to go up against level 10 enemies, it could be quite difficult, especially in the Sands of Delta. Um, I never found the training field or woodland path to be particularly frustrating, but the Scorched Forest and the Sands of Delta can be quite difficult, um, especially just starting out when you have only level 9s. Once you have your first level 25, what most people do is they'll take them here to the mire or the kelp beds or the golem workshop. And sometimes I even see like ghost light ruins and down to crystal pools, but usually the mire is particularly what I use. And you can take your dragons and train two lower level dragons with your higher level dragon. And that makes it significantly faster and easier, especially during the events that boost um, experience. Oh, that's not what I meant to click on. But yeah, that's what that means. Um, and that's why that is there. Uh, Dragon Share Theme Week. Uh, the theme weeks, I, I don't really know that it needs to be discussed, but it's just sharing your dragons, if you did not know what um, what that was. Um, they do it every week, not necessarily consistently on the same day, though. So, this is a good one. Let's talk about how the Treasure Marketplace stocks. So, um, every five minutes there's a chance for all of the items to stock. And every two hours, in line with Swip's swap stand, the it resets what can appear. And when you're actually in the marketplace, there is a certain number of items. Uh, each item stocks a certain amount. Every five minutes, there's a chance for it to stock more out of a certain RNG or out of certain parameters. For example, these advisor footies, every five minutes it may roll a chance to stock between one and 10 more uh, that people can buy. Um, so all that this update does is it increases the restock amount. So instead of restocking one, some a number between one and 20, the breed change scrolls, can stock between one and 30. Uh, so whereas the maximum restock every five minutes would have been 20 before, it can now go up to 30. Um, this also means that right when the rollover happens, um, the marketplace tends to be very, very empty because uh, it's waiting for restock. And maybe there are like five things that stock one item or six items or whatever it was. I do not know the exact parameters uh, for all of the restocks off the top of my head, but there you go. That's how that should work. And the final one, which was yesterday, the Flight Rising events calendar has been updated with dates through August 2024. 
If you're not familiar with the Flight Rising events calendar, it's in the encyclopedia. It is literally just the dates for all of the events that happen, not just the holidays, but uh, or other events, but like Drake Harvest and Talk Like a Pirate Week. Uh, the autumn seasonal items. So the seasonal items the, that Sage sells in the Grand Exchange. These, uh, it gives the dates for when these will swap out for um, the next uh, season. And it also lists the gem item cycle week. Uh, there are two of these a year, if I'm remembering correctly. And it is just some exclusive gem items that only appear during these weeks. Uh, it includes the wild claw scroll, scroll breed change scrolls, um, and some apparel. It's not, um, the wild claw breed change, breed change scroll is going to be the most important item to appear, uh, through that. So I wouldn't be particularly concerned. Now I'm going to double check. Yep, that was the most recent site status. Um, so that will be the end of the discussion for today. Um, but I hope this was helpful. I hope this was enjoyable, that I'm not, uh, doing this for no reason and that I could actually provide some, uh, in interesting information. Uh, so thanks for hanging out. Uh, have a wonderful day. Uh.